Hello everyone, my name is Benton Reed, and welcome to another Speed Draw video. I had been feeling the urge for a little while to get back to my roots of drawing just weird little guys, and so I was inspired to make a pixel art piece based on a creepy video game merchant. It's a very dark, very high contrast, very kind of pixely feel to it. And I streamed the process of making this over on my Twitch channel, which is at the Benton Reed. So if you want to watch the VODs and get a longer look into the making of this piece, or just see me make more art, go follow me over there. But without further ado, let's jump right in. So to start out, as always, I kind of just take some various bright colors and start blocking in my shapes, blocking in the general composition and kind of getting a feel for where things are going to go. Like I said, this was meant to be a kind of video game RPG horror merchant. So I really wanted to have this kind of frame composition around this guy with enough space at the bottom to put whatever items it is that he eventually ends up selling. So you can see I'm using kind of a red for my base sketch, green for my environment, and then a light blue for my character. And I start by laying in his little table and laying in some wooden slats, trying to get some rough perspective in there, single point perspective only, just to get an idea of flatness since it is kind of just a big rectangle. And then I lay in some texture. Any of the paint and texture work that I do for about the first half of this, you can kind of just ignore because I end up changing about 80% of it, but I'll get to that later start out, I just kind of am laying in shapes, laying in textures, and getting a general feel for the piece as it kind of gets started. I'm laying in some little silver nails for his table. And I pull up some reference and I start working on these drapes. I wanted them to be these kind of purple tent drapes, the idea being that he's set up this table outside, out front of his kind of circusy tent, and that's kind of where you come across him. So I play with a lot of different rendering styles for these drapes, but eventually I end up sticking with a very sharp one. I play with a lot of blurs and a lot of jumbles, and I just don't end up liking them. So I keep it very sharp in the divisions of the colors. You can see just laying in the shadows, and laying in the highlights, just adding contour slowly but surely over time. And I add a little bit of a shadow at the bottom just to kind of separate it from the table. Again, nothing too super complicated, and I'm going to go back and change it. And then just doing the other side exactly the same way, exactly the same colors. Just laying in those wrinkles and contours, getting this kind of pulled back drape appearance. And I decide that it's not really intricate enough, so I wanted to add another element. So I add this kind of gold tassel trim to the edge on both sides. That I think does a really good job of framing the uh, merchant when I eventually add him in. And I'm kind of just checking my sketch. I add on my runner, my table runner is kind of what I called it. His little canvas that he lays out to put his wares upon. And this is another one that's going to look very different in this version than how it eventually ends up looking. Um, I kind of sketched it, went away for two days, and came back and said, you know what, I kind of hate this. And completely redid a lot of the color work and a lot of the texture work. You can see me kind of trying to lay in a canvasy, scratchy texture on it and then jumbling it out just a little bit. And I actually, I kind of like how it looks. It just didn't really fit the aesthetic that I really wanted it to have. So I had drawn this lantern, realized it's way too small, throw in the actual lantern at a much larger size, do some work to kind of get that glowing effect, that glowing glass effect. Start adding in all my highlights. This lantern will also eventually end up moving. This is a piece that went through a lot of changes about halfway through. But just working on the shade, working on the shape, adding some rust to the chain, and then working on the final background. Again, I kind of wanted this idea of him being inside of a tent. So he kind of comes out, sets this table up in front of his tent, and then you buy his things. And so I work on this background, very low detail, and push it kind of towards a blue. Eventually it will go almost completely to black. I think you can see like one twinkle of one of the tassels in the final image. But then I start working on the merchant, and he starts out really, really soft and almost kind of cutesy. But he has this kind of greenish hue to his skin that I really liked. But as I was drawing him the first time, he was just so round and puffy and not creepy at all. And then I just started adding in lines and he got so much creepier. 
I decided to have him smoking a cigar because I think it works well for the kind of vibe that he gives off. You can see he's still very like flat faced, very smooth faced right now, and it just doesn't really have the right vibe. So I'll eventually go back and just start adding wrinkles and cracks and all kinds of things to his face, making him a weird little dude. And his eye is way too huge. But I'll go back and fix that as well. You can see we kind of start to lay in the shape of the face, leave it, and come back later. Lay in the folds on the hood, get some detail on there, kind of a rim lighting from the lantern, which will eventually get a lot brighter than it is right now. But adding some gristle teeth, and there's where I shrink the eyeball. You can see me start going into face mode here. Do a little tangent thinking about some text things. I was streaming and one of my chatters asked me something about a text question, and so I drew an H to kind of demonstrate what I was talking about, but it has no bearing on this piece. That's the kind of content you get if you go watch me at Twitch slash Lee Benton Reed. I just kind of wanted to give him some pockmarks and wrinkles. I give him these little pustule uh, sores on the side of his face, on the side of his jaw. Kind of just really, I just want him to be a gross little dude. And he ends up being a very gross little dude. But you can see right now it's very bright. It's very... Uh, low contrast it very much sits in kind of the middle so i left it for two days and we're two days later now and i look at it and i'm like this is not what i want so i mess around with it a little bit in photoshop and i kind of get an idea of what i want and then i go back into a sprite and i start bumping up the contrast using a lot more pure black to kind of give that old low bit screen bleed effect and just darkening the whole thing up upping the contrast on the whole thing I'm gonna move the lantern over here in just a second. And I will do a lot of work on this runner. I do a couple of different treatments and I hate all of them until I finally land on one that I actually really like. But you can see me think about it, leave it because I get frustrated and then start working on the figure of the merchant. Really just kind of keeping him simple because I know that I'm gonna have him on a basically black background that you're not really gonna be able to see anything that he's doing. So I just use the rim lighting to kind of roughly form his shapes, draw in a hand, and then I do a little art cheat once I draw in this hand, and I just copy-paste it to the other side. Because that's a thing that you can do, and no one can get mad at you. Because it's your art, and it doesn't matter. So I literally just copy-paste, rotate it, and move it to the other side, because it's not important to this piece. So I'm not going to spend the time working on it. And I add, I start to try to add a little glow, and that's when I realize I really want to move the lantern. So I add this really chunky, dithered glow to the lantern, and then go and work on the background background, really darkening it up. And then adding some gradients, some dithered gradients for this one, to really get that chunky, chunky, dithered feel. And I realized that the runner is way too light in the value scale. So I go and do a treatment to try to darken it. I end up hating it. It's too saturated. It's too colorful. I get all the way into Photoshop before I realize that I hate it. Um, then I come back, do a little more fold work on the guy. And then I don't even think I really end up keeping it. But I try out some different treatments, try to jumble him up a little bit. And it just ends up making him look too busy, too unclear in his shapes. So I keep him as he is with that nice little rim lighting. And I think this is probably around when I'm playing around in Photoshop for the first time and I wasn't recording it. Cause yeah, I come back through and I'm like, this doesn't look the way I want it to. I don't like the way it looks. So I'm just gonna use some dithered gradients and I get a much scratchier, much more interesting feel that I really, really like actually. So he's a video game merchant. So he's gotta have things to sell. So I make little boxes, little menu boxes for him. And I was taking uh, suggestions from the chat when I was drawing these and what we landed on were YouTube, uh, please don't listen, jar of piss, <laughs> a single piece of bow tie pasta, and I'll save the reveal for the last one, one particularly smelly sock. So I just draw in these items, get some detail in them, a little glow on the piss. For some reason, we decided that the, glow, the piss should glow. And this is about all I do in A Sprite, so I'll hop over to Photoshop and get to work on post-production stuff. I knew I wanted to really, really blast the contrast. So I use a mix of a posterized layer and just a regular levels layer to uh, really, really crunch the colors down, add in his little text with some pixelated filters to kind of give it that screen bleed effect. 
and just doing a lot of color options and trying to decide what kind of colors I want. There's a lot of different options and I really liked a lot of them. You see me flash through a really, really blue one there that I really, really like. But in the end, I kind of land with this very purple tone. It looks about like this. So this is my little piece inspired by creepy merchants in video games. I hope you enjoy and like and follow for more, like and subscribe for more. Go follow me over on Twitch for more art stuff. I also play video games over there. Uh, and yeah, I've been Benton Reed and I'll see you next time. Peace out.